The SB140 is the second 650B bike to be released by Yeti this year. Like its long travel brother, the SB165, the SB140 is not really designed for racing, it's more designed for just having fun on the trails. As the name suggests, it's got 140mm of travel in the back, it's got a 160mm fork, air sprung suspension, and 2.6 inch tires. It carries on in the same vein as other Yetis released recently, starting with the 130 and the 150 released last year, in that it's got pretty progressive geometry. It's got a 77 degree effective seat angle, a 65 degree head angle, and just over 500 millimeters of reach in the XL, which is the bike that I tested. Like all other full suspension Yetis, it uses their Switch Infinity system. The unique thing about this design is that the main pivot slides up and then down slightly, as you go through the travel. That means that you get the most anti-squat, which is kind of the force that holds you up and stops the rear suspension from squatting and bobbing into its travel when you pedal. That force peaks in the middle of the travel and then drops off towards the end. That means you get a really efficient pedaling bike in that part of the travel where you're pedaling. But as you get over about halfway through the travel, the anti-squat drops off quickly, which means that the Pedal kickback, which is pretty much directly related to anti-squat, tapers off as you get deeper in the travel. That means you get really good pedaling, but without sacrificing too much the feeling of feedback through the feet that you tend to get with high anti-squat designs. When you're putting a lot of power through the pedals, it barely bobs at all, so it's really efficient and firm feeling under power. The bike comes with 2.6 inch Maxxis tyres, you've got a Minion DHF on the front and a Maxxis Recon on the back. These are very fast rolling tyres. We've shown in the past in previous videos that bigger tyres roll faster over bumpy ground. And so on rougher and rocky climbs, they do seem to carry speed really well and kind of absorb those small little bumps as you're riding along. And most importantly, that steep seat angle just puts your hips in a nice position for attacking steep and technical climbs. It's not ideal when it comes to descending though because that rear tire in particular is quite bouncy over rough terrain. It's also got very little in the way of tread. So the grip from the rear tire is very minimal and you've got to rely more on the front brake to slow down. Speaking of which, this bike is specced with SRAM's brand new SRAM G2 Ultimate brakes which are a bit disappointing actually. With the 180mm rotors that also come on the bike, I just thought they were a bit underpowered when you're going down long steep descents. Also, my set had quite a long amount of lever travel, so I'd rather see something like a Code. The SRAM Code is my favorite brake. Um, the, the G2 just doesn't seem anywhere near as good, in my opinion. So that was a bit disappointing. I also find that I couldn't get the bar high enough for my tastes. I'm 190 centimeters tall and I like a high bar. And also the longer you go with the reach, the taller the bar needs to be for the bike to feel in proportion. Otherwise I find the angle between the pedals and the grips is just too low for me to feel properly in control on steep and technical terrain. Having said that, this could be remedied to some extent with a higher rise bar and it's certainly not gonna be a problem for everybody. None of the other journalists at the launch complained about the bars being too low. But for me, I just couldn't ride the bike confidently with that bar height. And that's a shame because I think they've got the geometry really spot on for a trail bike. I think 505 mil of reach in the XL is a good size for someone of my height. The 77 degree seat angle for a bike of this travel I think is perfect. The bottom bracket height is nice and low and they've got the suspension balance really nice with the 36 up front at 160 mil and the DPX2 at the rear at 140 mil. Uh, that may sound imbalanced, but actually want to take into account the fact that that 160 mil of travel is not in the vertical plane. Uh, the actual vertical travel front and rear is pretty similar. And the overall feel of the suspension and how they work together front and rear is nicely matched. I did manage to use full travel on the rear pretty easily, so it's not the most progressive setup, but you can always make it more progressive with a bigger volume spacer if you needed to. And despite me using full travel, the suspension always felt supportive and stable when I needed it to be, particularly under power, but also when pushing into corners and things. It's not the most comfortable and isolating system. You still get some feedback through your feet, but it will take on pretty gnarly terrain with no problems at all. 
So in many ways the SP140 is similar to its longer travel brother, the SP165, which we made a video about a few weeks ago, and there's a link to that down in the description. In its stock form, with that tire and those brakes, it's not the best kind of super technical descender. That's what the SP165 is for. But for more kind of mixed terrain, where you're doing a lot of climbing, a lot of punchy pedaling, the SP140 is a really good bike for that. Now this is the part where we have to talk about the price. So the T2 version, which is the second top spec option, costs £7,300 or $7,500. It's not a cheap bike. If that's a bit rich for you, there is a less expensive version, which has a slightly lower grade of carbon fiber, so it's slightly heavier, and slightly less expensive components, which costs £5,300 or $5,400. So that's the Yeti SP140. Let us know in the comments what you think of the bike and which would you have out of the SP140 and the SP165. Let us know and don't forget to like, subscribe and click the little bell if you want to be notified about these videos.